Hey, my name's James Wilkinson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about buy to let and the fact that it's potentially dead in 2023 and what can you do as an alternative on your investment journey. Now, this channel is all about my investment journey and I want to invite you along with me. I'm building a portfolio for my two daughters. We've got Amelie, who's two, Georgia, who's 22. Uh, in the last six months, we bought a couple of properties for them. Uh, and you can see that on the channel, exactly how that went, the renovations that we did, the properties we purchased. So do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to see all the new stuff and go and check out those previous deals that we've done as well. Well, a lot's been going on in the last few years and we've had some crazy house price rises in the last couple of years. And that has led to where we are today, which has record inflation or very high inflation for a prolonged period of time. Uh, and the interest rates are going up significantly. So buy to let is tough to say the very, very least, because right now, if you are to do a buy to let in the south of England, you're going to struggle to get 75% loan to value. So normally on a buy to let mortgage, the bank will loan you 75% of the value of the property. The problem in the South is that the prices went up so much. While the rents did go up, they didn't go up enough. So I bought a property for Georgia in Dorking, which is in Surrey, um, before the new year. And that property, we had to give slightly more deposit into that property uh, because of that very, very reason. In fact, the buy to let company, uh, that the uh, the mortgage company we used was called Land Bay, uh, and they thought that we would get what was it? It was something like it was something like nine hundred rent. They felt that we would get. I can't recall exactly, but we got one thousand one hundred. Uh, and so, if the figures that we told them were correct, they accepted, then we would have got uh, slightly better. But it's fine uh, because what we always look to do is add value to property so that property needed like a little bit of a decoration uh, a little bit of work needed to the garden not loads it had a new it's had a new uh, flat roof put on it which has uh, helped improve the value of the property since and so if you want to do buy to let in the southeast of england you're going to need to look at a strategy or the south pretty much anywhere below birmingham you're going to need to look at a strategy called brr b triple r and so this is only really gonna work in the South if you do something called buy, then you refurbish the property, then you refinance and you rent it. So here's a couple of deals that I've done in the last couple of years down South. Uh, I have a one bedroom flat that I've turned into a two bedroom flat. Very easy work, it costs less than 10 grand to put a stud wall, move a kitchen, uh, decorate it. We insulated a back bedroom to improve the EPC rating. Well, not really a big job at all. Uh, and that added 50 grand in value. So then that can work because then I can refinance the property and the rent is going to be higher as well. Uh, and so that allows me to get some of my money out, if not all of it. In that instance, we got all of it out. But in today's market, I might not expect to get all of the money out, but I wouldn't leave in as much. And that might reduce my deposit that's left in there, maybe down to 10%. So that's something that I would consider. We took a studio flat in Dorking as well, and we turned that into a one bedroom property, just again by adding a stud wall, very basic stuff. That one cost five or six grand to do, very, very easy. And for that five or six grand, we've got a stud wall put up and we've got a kitchen redone as well. We've got a nice kitchen from B&Q for like 1500 quid. And that was the installation of that, any decorating work and the stud wall and plastering. So really, really cost effective. That again, added 50,000 pounds to that property. Now you can't do that up north. Uh, in the south, properties are a lot more expensive. So in the southeast, you're gonna need to look to do something like that. Now, other strategies that can work in this area that I'm in, uh, so London area, home county sort of area, is where you buy a property as a, as, a, as a buy to let, but you get consent and you run it as serviced accommodation, right? Now you could do this in two ways. You could do this by uh, renting the property on someone and with their permission, renting out a serviced accommodation, or you could own the property and do that as well. Then that, that works twice 
uh, as well for you there because the if you own it, obviously the, the mortgage payments are going to be lower than the rent. So either way, serviced accommodation is, is a great strategy because it's going to get you higher rent. So Dorking, one bedroom flat, you'll easily get a thousand pounds a month rent for that. However, if you rent it out on a room by room basis, you'll easily get more, more than a hundred, between a hundred and 150 pounds per night in there. Now let's just say we got it per night and we rented it out for 20 nights. Now we get 2,000 pounds per month rather than just the thousand. Obviously there's still a bit more cost in that. So we've got to pay for gas and electric uh, on those things. But what if we put it on, on for 150? Maybe we're looking at three grand then for the 20 nights, which will make a big difference to our income there. So serviced accommodation is a great strategy uh, and that can still work when buy to let doesn't. Um, a lot of uh, investors are looking for deals at the moment. So deal sourcing is a great strategy where you can get cash flow. Now, it is a bit more like a job, but you could get a deal and you could sell that deal to an investor like me. I use deal sources for around £3,000 to £10,000, depending on how lucrative that deal is. Now, that's great because you can then use that to save up for deposits to buy your own assets in the future. Because I really believe that you should own the assets ultimately. So while rent to service accommodation is good, I want you to keep the cash flow from that. And that's going to be used to build your deposit pot up, right? So deal sourcing is a, a great strategy that will work. Um, there are lots of opportunities. There are people that are desperate to sell and they can be really, really positive as well. Another thing that will work particularly well as we're going into uh, a recession, not leads, lease options, right? So these work well when somebody doesn't need the money right now. Now, these are particularly good up north, and it's when someone's in negative equity that they're more likely to consider a lease option. And this is where you can get a property for just one pound. Now, what happens is you need to find a property that someone needs to just get that property gone, and you can take on that property in on their behalf. So if they're in negative equity, you might have to clear that negative equity for them. So if they're a couple of months behind, you might have to pay the mortgage company on their behalf. You'll take on the mortgage on their behalf and then likely that property will need some work and you can add some value. You'll agree a price. So they might have bought that house for a 100 grand, but today it might be worth 90,000 pounds, right? It might be only worth 90,000 pounds. Now they're kind of stuck because if they sell it for 90, which is the market value, then they have to personally give the bank 10 grand to get rid of that debt, which they won't be looking to do, I'm telling you now. So what you can do is you can agree and you can say, look, I'll pay you 100, but I need to delay the completion until seven years from now. That allows the market to recover, guys. And while it's recovering, you could be adding value to the property. You'll be paying the mortgage, but you'll be renting that property out as an HMO, a service accommodation, whatever you choose to do. Uh, it could be just a standard buy to let in that instance. And then within the seven years, when the market has recovered, you're then going to buy that property from them. And hopefully it's gone up to something like 120 and you've created some equity in that property. Lease options are going to be very, very big during 2023, 24, 25. Often when the, the market's rising, no one will consider that. But now there are people that can't sell their property, that just want the liability gone, and that's where you can help. So these are some strategies that can work. Now, buy to let, does it work anywhere? Well, right now at the rates that you've got currently, it does still work in the north, right? It does still work in the north. And that's something you would consider. So if you looked in like, um, for example, Doncaster or Sheffield uh, or those sorts of area, because the rent is still relatively high, you can get a hundred grand property and rent it for 600 quid, the numbers still stack up. And so you can get the normal buy to lets to work up north. But you might want to look at more cash flow. So right now, I'm looking at HMOs. And so an HMO is a house of multiple occupancy. 
I've got some HMOs that I'm looking at currently up north. We're just going back and forth with figures at the moment. Um, but realistically, that property is going to go for around £130,000. Uh, and it's got four rooms that would rent for four fifty, very, very easy. So that's a high cash flow strategy. It's a landlord that's in lives abroad that's just had enough that wants to get rid of a portfolio of HMO. So you could be looking for deals like this. So buy to let is going to be tough. It's not going to work in the south if you want to do a standard vanilla buy to let for a little while, but it does work in the north. But I would be looking at a combination of strategies. There are other strategies that will work better in this market. You need to be looking for properties where you can add value. When you can add value to the property, another bedroom, an extension, sorting out the garden, anything you can do that can add value to that property is a good investment and that's what you want to look at. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Do you think buy to let's dead? Do you think it's going to come back? Let me know in the comments. Do like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Check out all the other content on the channel, including this video right here. Bye for now.